Namaskaram to everyone and very happy to meet you in yet another episode of Expressions Espresso. The world is slowly opening up and in India too, the COVID numbers are reducing. Tamil Nadu is showing a good decrease in count and our very own Chennai is on a healthy taper. This indicates a lot of positivity, but let it not make us a little reckless. Our move from virtual to real should be slow and steady. So here we are in another virtual meet that is going to leave us with tapping feet, clapping hands, and all smiles at the end of it all. Last fortnight, we were with Lakshmi Priya, where we discussed about her unique film roles and got to know all her other facets. I had much feedback on how her perseverance and her outlook to life and in life and the causes that she stood for inspired and motivated so many youngsters trying to make a mark in their career Thank you, Lakshmi Priya Chandramauli, for having shared your views with our audience. Today, we have on our show a brilliant, brilliant achiever and a stalwart and legend in her art. I think I would need a few more sessions if I have to really take you through all her set of achievements and innovations. That is probably the toughest part of my presentation. To condense the feats of my trailblazing guests and the guest of today, of course, simply in the interest of time. Born to high, highly accomplished parents, her father, who was an internationally reputed filmmaker and freedom fighter, and her mother, who was a music composer, lyricist and instrumentalist. It was quite natural, I guess, that the award outdid them in all aspects. Truly a remarkable chip of the old block, I must say. With a master's degree in ethnomusicology and a doctorate with her thesis, being Karnas in Indian dance and sculpture. She's a brilliant academician as well. Her creativity as a dancer and choreographer has brought in newer aspects and so much freshness to this pristine dance form of Bharatanatyam, which she rechristened as Bharatanrityam with over 140 awards the Padma Bhushan, the SNA, the Nritti Chudamani, and the Fukuoka Asian Cultural Award of Japan, to name a few, 11 books authored by her, and 27 group dance presentations, productions, apart from many solos. This trailblazer has left such a deep footprint in her art journey that it is difficult to replicate. A dancer, a beautiful, brilliant dancer who performs to overflowing auditoria, a leading daily in a review has described her so aptly in these words. The fact she stands the fact is that she stands apart as a dancer. She filled the stage with her presence and altercated between being an avatar of one of the deities she represented, thus making a stone sculpture come alive. Wow. Her hobbies include reading books of different genres, gardening, 
pottering around the house, spending time with her grandniece and nephew, and watching meaningful movies. She listens to a lot of Carnatic music, and I'm honored that she loves Emil Viamma's music, Emil Sama's music, and finally, a little of my music as well. She loves Hindi and Tamil film songs, old and new. Now, can you see what I said earlier is quite relevant, that this list is getting endless. So let me pause here and let us know more from the door and herself. But before I invite her, I must mention here that she is a good luck charm and a wonderful well-wisher for me. She has been the chief guest at many functions where I have been given awards and I have the honor of receiving not one or two, but many awards from her golden magical hands. It is my pleasure and happiness to welcome this multi-talented and erudite dance diva, Dr. Padma Subramaniam Atta. Namaskaram. How are you doing, Atta? I'm fine. Thank you for the great intro. <laughs> we must thank you. I, the official team, and of course the audience who have been so eager that they've been sending me messages. So, welcome in the show. We are privileged to have you. Welcome, Pandora. Welcome, Pandora. Papa, Karuna Sindhum Yana do Oh, <laughs> 
That was specially woven together for you, Akka. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You took me back to Kanchipuram. Thank you so much. I know how much you, you know, in your heart, Kanchipuram is and Mahapiriva is. So I thought this was the most relevant thing. And of course, the two ragas that you like, Tirvani and Todi. <laughs> Thank you. I have his picture right behind me. Of course. Nariya questions, Rikaka. So I'm going to try and rush to, you know, kind of cover all the questions. Go ahead. Your father was into films and your mother was into music. How did this passion for dance, for Nritya, come to you? And who and what made you choose this path? Well, even before I was born, my father started, uh, founded the Nrithyodhya Dance School. And this year happens to be 80th year. He started it in 1942. And uh, uh, I grew with the school, I, I should say, with stalwarts dancing and practicing and teaching. So I couldn't have escaped dance. I think <laughs> dance was me. Instead of my choosing dance, I think dance chose me. That's so beautifully said. You were a student of the legend Varvur Ramaya Pillai. For how many years were you his disciple? And what do you feel were the very unique aspects in his Bani and in his transfer of the knowledge through the teaching? Uh, actually, um, Varur. Uh, Vadya was one of the teachers at Drityodhya. Okay. But I started under his disciple Kausalya. I did one whole margam. And then Vadya uh, corrected. It took about one year or a little more than that. And then he only conducted my Arangetram. And uh, I continued naturally. I continued under him for quite some years. Hmm. About uh, what is special about his um, style is, it's a combination of definition of movements with grace. So there's a fluidity of movement, which is very important, because even um, you know, uh, Indian stage, uh, I think Indian dance caught its. Uh, um, beauty from the concept of Apsara. Apsara means moving in water. Water, you know, they are the water nymphs. So how fluid your movements are hmm. is what is going to give you the essence of Lasya. Right. And that is what uh, Vadya's style was. And he would uh, teach Abhinaya also. He was good in both uh, Nritta and Abhinaya because these days uh, children are going to one person for Abhinaya, another person for Tala, another person for uh, asking some Mridanga Vidwan to compose Jati. Yes. All that was not necessary because he was everything rolled in one. He was so great in his uh, facial expression. So I was fortunate to be under him. Nitshimaka. Even as a child, you had a flair for singing in various Indian and foreign languages. And you have accompanied your sister-in-law, the very famous Shamila Balakrishnanaka, for a couple of albums titled Folk Music of Tamil Nadu. And they were Tamirisi. Also, you have sung Jay Deva's Ashtapati's as a separate album. Singing skills are on the yar phone for now. But before that, before your answer comes in, I want to tell you that both of us shared the same guru for a period of time, Sri B.V. Lakshman sir. Yes. He was such a, I would say, a paternal guru. Um, he was so kind. I can't forget how understanding he was. Uh, to be honest with you, Sudha, I was more into when I was a, 
well, till I was even a teenager, though there was so much of classical music at home, my mother was a composer. My elder sister, Neela, was regularly doing kacheris. But somehow, you know, I was drawn to the Lata Mangeshkar. <laughs> my first attraction was Lata Mangeshkar. How much we miss her today. But her music will remain eternally. And uh, to start with, uh, I was not too interested in Carnatic music. This is, I'm talking truth. Somewhere I have to tell you the truth. But then slowly I developed interest listening to great uh, um, people like Vasanthi Akka, I mean, your guru, MLV Akka, I used to call her Vasanthi Akka. And uh, I used to love her voice. I used to love the way in which she was uh, making something very difficult sound as though it is simple. <laughs> that, was, that was her greatness. Among the men, Dr. Balamurli Krishna. On the musical, it attracted me. I slowly I started developing interest, and my father was very keen that I must learn Carnatic music and in a BA music classetter. Hmm. You will be surprised. I never learned in a proper Kramama Sarali Varisha. Straight away Ragam Padine, straight away Soram Padine. Because I was growing in that yeah. atmosphere. Thanks to my home um, environment. Yes. And uh, on the period, Mm, BA music pani um, ndukirche my parents thought urunga or teacher ta kattukonu choice was lakshman sir i i mean i heard one of my classmates um, <clears throat> who was learning from him adala adave adhe teacher enak vanu solli sir vandu kattukottar he was so kind and he in uh, Introduced bhajans, Mudalla. In the in order of psychology, Tirinji, Konjukonjama, he drew me into uh, Pancharatma. <laughs> so, Aglain Aramichi, but that's a great thing. A teacher must be able to, he must be able to inspire. He inspired me, he taught me. In fact, now and the Avaroda Pina Lokanta put a party. Hmm. So I was very fortunate to be under real great gurus in both dance and music. You have evolved a, a new training for you know the, the for the body movements, as you said, the fluidity of the body, based on your study of Natya Shastra. And I I always always have felt that your disciples do get a holistic view of the various aspects of dance as an art, not just dance as dance. You know, practical, solitary, theoretical knowledge, emotional, intellectual, spiritual, and the connect. And of course, you have trained students in Natuvangam as well. These are so many aspects, Akka, just not Natyam, but everything that surrounds Natyam. But if you were to prioritize, which would be the three most important ones that a dancer should definitely have the connect with? I think uh, um, beginners have to definitely do the physical movements. Hmm. They have to, like, Sarali Ilampadi Namnanamo. Akaram, Akaram Veneme, Andamari from head to foot, the body has to come under control. Hmm. That is very important. To move any one limb without shaking any other part of the body. Hmm. And then to move other parts of the body also 
but according to symmetry and proportion. Hmm. All that comes under physical training. Then you get an intellectual understanding of what is being taught. Karnak kuda. Karnak evlo mukkiyo. Music arkatom, dance arkatom. Adiliye namak so much of mathematics is there. So taalang kattakano. Then when they have to emote, they must understand the character, the situation. If you have a good idea, you can't get a good idea. So, on the understanding of the, it's more emotional. And then comes a spiritual level. You are the first Akar, to bridge the gap between what I might say theory is sometimes dry. You know, we say even musicology of the Patil. But Dancer, theory and practice, you have revived an obsolete dance technique. You discovered that the 108 karnas, the basic units of dance, are actually movements and not just static poses. And you reconstructed these movements. Uh, how did that inspiration come, that spark come in you to choose this topic? which has now become a milestone. Well, when I started, uh, I never thought of PhD and all that. That was not in any, uh, it was not uh, there around. Nobody was doing any PhD. No artist was trying. And uh, I was uh, drawn to the sculptures, particularly Chidambaram, because Chidambaram is on way from Chennai to our native town, Nagapatnam. And every time I went for Darshan of Nataraja, on the Gopuratla I will stand. I'm, I've been a dreamer. I, I would be pulled uh, like a magnet. And the sculptures will pull me. So mm -hmm. I, would, I would think, even as a teenager, I would think, why am I not being taught some of these postures? It's so beautiful. And other, it kept on um, hounding me. And then um, uh, my brother, my eldest brother, Balakrishnan, was doing a documentary on temples and festivals of Tamil Nadu. At that time, he had typhoid and he had to be in bed. He couldn't even read. My father said, uh, Padu, you sit by his side and read the books for him. Mm. So that opened a new vista for me. Right. Then I knew what I wanted. So this is what I was searching for. And uh, it was all God's grace. It was a boon for me. <laughs> boon for the entire world, Akka, really. Through you. You were the, you know, the catalyst. And, uh, I went under Dr. T. N. Ramchandran, a great, uh, I would only call him and walking encyclopedia. I was again very, very fortunate to come under him for guidance um, in my research. So that's how it all happened. But as a dancer, I I could, when I started studying the literature, Nati Shastra, mm. um, my guru in research was not a dancer. He had nothing to do with dance. But when he started explaining, I said, Mama, this is movement, it's not a pose. Why are you all calling it a pose? A karana is an action. Hmm. Start, you know, it has its root in krin, meaning action. Okay. Even Bajagovinda Tlele, do krin karane dane, action hmm. dane. So on the action, you can't freeze it. it sculptures hmm. like so sculptures are like uh, frozen moments of movements. This is mm -hmm. what occurred to me. And then I started uh, reading the text, its commentary, the inscriptions relating to it, started ma making a correlated study of the whole thing. And as a dancer, I was not simply satisfied penning down the products of my research. I wanted to have a feel of it in my body. Hmm. And I used some of my, you know, um, I would say 
pioneer students like Gayatri's mother, hmm. uh, Uma Sriram. Um, they were all my guinea pigs. I, I was trying it on them. And that's how it took time. Um, you were ordained by Mahapiriva to design a new set of 108 Karna sculptures of Lord Shiva and Goddess Parvati in black granite for a temple of Lord Nataraja built recently at Satara and Maharashtra. This is of such a tall order that he was a Dirga Darshi who rightly delegated this project to you. What were your highest points, Akka, while completing this task that made you feel you have done complete justice to Mahapariva's uh, order? Well, um, I would always call myself uh, uh, an instrument in the hands of Mahapariva. I don't want to say I did it. I like how um, Arjuna in Bhagavad Gita now the nimitta karana no machora. And when I was a nimitta karana in the hands of Mahapariva, mm -hmm. and uh, I'll tell you how I felt that I'm an instrument because when I did the line drawings <clears throat> for the first six uh, Karana sculptures, I went and showed it to him. All the 108 were approved by him. Okay. Only after that, it was all given to the sculptor. He asked me, have you been to Indonesia? I said, no. He said, go. I didn't know why he said that. And this Karana project was 12 years. It took wow. 12 years for the sculptor to complete this uh, work. Kumbhabhishekam was over and uh, luckily, uh, Two days before he attained Mahasamadhi, that work was complete. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was even placed in a way that was directed by Mahaswami. So it was informed to him that they have completed, the work is complete. And uh, then we all lost him a couple of days later. And only then, on my way to Japan, hmm. I thought, let me detour. Why did he ask me to go to Indonesia? What is special? And there, I discovered in a ninth century temple, uh, which got destroyed in earthquake in 15th century. Hmm. For the past 120 years, Dutch archaeologists have been rebuilding it stone by stone they have been rebuilding and they have only completed the main structures 250 parivara devatas shrines mm -hmm. it's all in, in the form of an ocean of stones sudha you will be surprised if i tell you you can't believe mm -hmm. within an hour in that ocean of stone I discovered 52 Karana sculptures. Mm -hmm. It was like, you know, Shiva dancing. Mm -hmm. And those 52 tallied with my designs for Satara. What a you know, my, my reconstruction. And mind you, the, the Indonesian version is 150 years older than the oldest version in India, that is Tanjavur Temple. So, this is a link beyond time and space. How do you think I could have done it? When I designed, I didn't even know about the existence of these sculptures. So uh, it is a miracle in my life. And that miracle was only because of the boon of Mahapariva. Thank you. I mean, that was, Sorry. I think that was the purpose of my life. This is my very chapter in life. Lap this will run up. Yeah, or me got a lay other wool wang in our soldier the wool wang in the other warranty other one they execute penny other execution. I do know our other you know, surely other couple and you know, need to share part of this something. Uh, I mean, nobody can explain that order of events. Let 
You have discovered a very strong Asian link to Bharatanatyam, apart from discovering candid links, links between, as you said, Natya Shastra and Indonesia. You realized the importance of Tirupavai and Tiruvambavai being used in Thailand. And in your group presentation of Pavai Nonbu, you involved Thai dancers. What is it about the Far East Akka that has a bonding with you? <laughs> 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 but the bonding is more through Mahaswami again. Kanchi Mahaswami is Devatin Kurala. He is, uh, we have uh, uh, his lectures on the Far East. And uh, in fact, it was he who um, even thought of seminars mm -hmm. on Indological Indic uh, uh, subjects like Veda, Agama, Shilpa, Shastra, uh, Sadas. He used to conduct these seminars. And for one of those seminars, which I think was in Ilyat and Gudi in um, mid 60s, he had uh, invited uh, the Raja Guru of Thailand, hmm. Vamadeva Muni. And with him came one uh, young dancer who would do uh, Hanuman um, Vesham in Ramayana. Uh, I mean, you all know that Ramayana is very popular all over the uh, uh, Southeast Asian countries. In fact, even we don't perform Ramayana so often. In Indonesia, Ramayana is performed every night mm -hmm. throughout the year in Prambanan, where I found the sculptures in that temple. The tourism department has organized this beautiful event. Every night there is Ramayana with about 150 artists. So they remember Rama, they remember Sita in everything, right from big... Um, well, um, Indorama, textiles, to any barber shop, everything is named after Rama there. <laughs> Rama barber shop. Uh -huh. It'll all be Rama. So, in fact, one question they asked me, some somebody, a commoner um, asked me was, um, we, we, have, we had Ramayana here. Ayutta, they, they actually that place is called Ayutta. Mm -hmm. Even in uh, Thailand, there is uh, they still the king is called Rama. The dynasty is called Rama dynasty. They asked me, do you have Ramayana in India? Mm -hmm. yeah, a commoner is asking me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. popular it. So how did it happen? In the Poirkina ke. Um, we must be proud of it. We must be very proud of it. And uh, I found a lot of links, even up to Japan, not only Paris. Hmm. And I found these links were really taking me more towards Ma Periva's concept because when Ma Periva brought Raja Guru from Thailand, uh, he brought him because he was talking about what is called Trip Pevai Trim Pevai Festival, hmm. which was celebrated in Thailand. And Mahapariva uh, thought it should have been Tirupave Tiruvambave, which is misspelt as Trip Pevai Trim Pevai. And he sent some scholars to go and uh, even uh, to verify. And they came back with, uh, um, well, if Periva says something, it has to be true. Sitting in one cow shed, he looks at the whole world, whole universe. So uh, for the <coughs> for seminar, he brought Vamadeva Muni. And this youngster danced Hanuman. Hmm. Hanuman Vaisham. And it was very surprising. But when I went to Thailand for the um, India festival, hmm. I had suggested to our government 
that instead of Ramayana, I'll take Tirupavai Tirubhambavai hmm. to revive the link. Because that Tripavai Trembavai festival had uh, stopped for almost 40 years when I hmm. went there. Uh, and in fact, I wanted a, um, you know, cooperation from the local artists. I said, we'll involve Together. the local artists and co-production, but uh, somehow uh, from here, they did not uh, correspond properly. And when I went there, when I gave my lecture demonstration at the Fine Arts University, it was my lecture to start with, but then the uh, chief of the department and I started discussing in mm -hmm. front of 200 dance students. Mm -hmm. He would ask me, how do you show Brahma? Then I will show. Then I will ask him, they, he will show. How do you show Hanuman? How do you like this? And then we started dancing together. Yeah. And then I said, there's so much Collect, so much of connection. <laughs> yes. Why don't you give me uh, eight or ten students of yours? At least for the last scene of our dance production, we'll dance together. And he was mm -hmm. happy to do it. In one day rehearsal, we danced together. And there I found a face mask of Bharatamani. Hmm. They presented me. And I felt. Uh, really ashamed that we don't worship him here. We don't remember him. We only use his name. Uh, before the concert in that Royal uh, Theatre at Bangkok, the director of the uh, theatre uh, took me into one, almost a puja room, where they had four masks, Shiva, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva and Bharatamuni. And they offer um, water, cups, rice, some um, fruits mm -hmm. and incense. And only after of offering flowers there, they take me to the stage. What happens there? They give me a saram of Mallipu as, as uh, fragrant as what you're having in your uh, pinnacle strung like how we would do it and he asked me to offer it to the stage. It's for the Ranga Devata. What has happened to all the tradition? So offer only after that they gave me the key to the green room. The mask I was so Overworked, they gave me a miniature mask, Bharata oh. mask. And then on that day, I decided I have to build a memorial for Bharata Muni, first of its kind. And when I announced this uh, at our Drutyodhya Jubilee celebration, it was Dr. Jayalalitha who was presiding that day. She immediately announced Five Acres Land for this. That's how Bharata Alango Foundation for Asian Culture came up. So we have a question. Oh. We have a memorial shrine for Bharata Muni. And there is, I've repeated, uh, because Mahaswami approved those designs for Satara, double that size. We have 108 Karana sculptures there. There is a museum of Asian uh, arts. We have a special exhibition of 100 years of Indian dance. Hmm. We have a Kanchi Mahaswami library, hmm. books, and uh, 1,000 hours of Carnatic music. So this is what has been possible all because of his grace. You almost led me to the next question, which was, I don't know, telepathy, perhaps. I was just going to ask you, you are the managing trustee of Bharata Elango Foundation for Asian Culture a Pan-Asian Cultural Research Center functioning with the object of becoming an Asian Cultural Corridor. So, what are the main objectives? Why don't you spare us uh, 
um, I would say, artists taking interest in everything, Sudha. You are such an intellectual and you're open to all new ideas in other uh, art forms also, not only music. That's very rare. I, I think I wrote to my guru, my MLV Amma. <laughs> Thank you so much. To hear it from you is, is such a blessing. Really. You are. You are someone special. Anga, um, uh, well, okay. I'm, I'm the founder, uh, managing trustee. Um, Kanyan and Gayatri my, from my family. Um, we had um, R. Krishna Swami, he, he passed away. His son, Hari Shankar, is one of the trustees. Sudhakar of um, Swati Soft Solutions. Um, and Kishur Gupta from mm. Andhra. Okay. These are the Jai trustees. Jai. And also Sri Jayaraman, uh, retired uh, uh, commissioner of income tax. He guides us from, okay. from law point of view, Hari Shankar is there. So we have a very good team who takes care of all uh, the uh, formalities that have to be followed. Kandiba. Mm. And we built the whole building without any support from the government. We, we didn't have any grant from state government, nor from the central government. Uh, corporate help came mainly from Infosys oh. and Sriram Group, plus my own performances. My own, uh, we have plowed in all our efforts rather dhanam dhanyam everything sadhu ungalude a dream a vision another very unique thing that happened was when i announced when i did um, uh, satara sculptures design we finished that hmm. maaswami told me why did you um, not involve others. You put in all your money. I I didn't know what to say. Hmm. He said, this is like Ur Kudi Terul Karamadri. Hmm. You must uh, share that punya with everybody. Keeping that in mind, I announced, I told artists, I'm doing this uh, and the karanas are double the size. Satara already rendedi. We repeated. So each of the 108 karanas have been sponsored by artists. We we'll put a board there giving the names, okay. mostly dancers and some musicians also. Virali Malay Kuruanji was premiered by yourself. Sudharani Raghupati Akka and Chitra Vishwesh Vidnaka. It was such a great hit and many subsequent shows were there, even outside of India. I think in six Middle East countries in 2000. And then, then again brought to life very recently at the Natyakala conference of Krishnan Sabha. So how did this come by? What was the magic in the presentation? I mean, I have been witness to this, so I know the match, but I want you to say it to the audience. Actually, Virali Malay Kuruvanji was not premiered with the, all of us. Virali Malay Kuruvanji is something which um, our Drityodaya staged uh, in early 60s. It's oh. a research product of Shamla Balakrishnan. Hmm. It was she who brought out, in fact, she had uh, um, in her uh, report, uh, she was a research officer for Sangeet Narak Academy. 60 oh. Kurvanjis she had uh, brought in and only this was with original music mm. and pre Tyagaraja music, which she learned from the last Devadasis of Virali Malay Temple. And uh, in fact, uh, the Arangetram of Kurvanji was... Uh, with Vadya doing Natwangam. 
Malura doing at Vanga. Yes, yes. I, but even at that time, I was only Karati. I didn't do the Mohini role. Uh, I'm very, I'm fond of humor. So in my interpretation of Karati, I brought in a lot of uh, wit and uh, humor. It was very popular even abroad with a small group. Uh, I had danced this in Russia, America, everywhere. One Pongal uh, festival, <clears throat> when Sita Ratnakar was uh, one of the producers in Doordarshan, we had um, a discussion when she wanted all of us to perform together. She was asking if it was possible. Right. And it was my brother Balakrishnan who suggested that we could do a abridged version of Kuravanji with Sudha, Chitra and me. Sudha as Mohini, Chitra as, uh, you know, Sakhi. And uh, that's how we did it. We had this for Pongal special in Doordarshan that hit the headlines. And uh, as president of India, Sri Arvanga Traman happened to see it in Delhi. Hmm. He was floored and he said, this has to be there in uh, Moscow for the India Festival. That's how we went there. So each one of us, we did some solo regular items. And then this was only half an hour of uh, all of us dancing together. That's how we did. And echo everywhere. They asked for this. So that's how it became very popular. I still remember that surprise element that you have in it. You come from the audience. The Kuda Yavachin Vandinga. Ajju, yellar yeyindu kaitati no. You have written many books, Akka. I'm picking only one of them, Nati Shastra and National Unity. How do you feel that a dance treatise can foster national unity? Which is really, unity is really the need of the hour today. See, uh, what you see in the Nati Shastra is relevant to every corner of India. Where many people mistake um, identity of Bharata Natyam with Bharata, Bharata's Natya. Oh. Bharata's Natya is drama. Natya means drama. Um. And dance is only a part of drama. But that part is, itself is encyclopedic. And Bharata Natyam is, uh, as it stands today, is uh, less than 300 years old. Because it came up like after the Muslim invasion, many things were lost. Temples were plundered, even in South India. This part of history is never taught, unfortunately. So many of our temples were plundered and the um, temples were closed down for more than half a century. So what was revived had a continuation and that is what you find in what we call Bharatanatyam today. But Bharata's Natya is more broad it is, um, I would think, you know, today, if you take the Karanas, hmm. some Karana, you can see how it has evolved as Bharatanatyam. Some Karanas evolved as Kathak uh, and Manipuri. Manipuri also. Hmm. The entire hand, arm movements described in Nati Shastra is more only in Manipur. The Netra Binaya, which is there in Nati Shastra, is more only in Kerala. Right. The footwork technique, which is supposed to be, uh, I don't have to tell you, Shatkala Govinda Marar. Hmm. Kalam he performed in six uh, Kalam. Uh, he sat uh, outside Tyagaraja's uh, house and listened. He was listening to Pancharatnam. He thought it was a Varnam. <coughs> no, no, Govinda Marar came from 
he was called shatkala govinda marar even during tyagaraj's time we had the concept of dancing in shatkala dancing hmm. also wow and the shatkala ngirudhu vandu ipo kathak la da oru paada paatam pandrava so for a simple thing i'll tell you when i started reconstructing the karanas i told you i had to have a feel of it in my body and i i used those karanas in my dance hmm. but i didn't change the format of the music it was a varnam right pada varnam but in pada varnam for the swaram and for the jati i used the karanas and one uh, uh, um, even late 60s one critic wrote in delhi that i am copying um, odissi so that i had never seen odissi till then odissi was not really discovered at that time hmm then i thought it's not a criticism but it was a revelation for me mm, i yes. thought okay that means natya shastra is there in orissi so i took um, the next immediate opportunity to meet kelu bab kelu charan mahapatra the great guru mm. we had discussions and he had uh, shown me the movements which i could relate to natya shastra mm. at this i had done natya shastra shiksha camps at least a dozen times on gurukula system on a pan indian level and sometimes pan asian level hmm. and i found natya shastra to be a mother of all these forms in, in short if i can make it simple for everybody to understand sanskrit was the lingua franca it was the connecting language all over asia there was a sanskrit university even in uh, uh, brunei around that that place so san uh, how did the chinese travelers come and what how did they speak to the local people it was sanskrit mm-hmm. so like sanskrit coexisted with all the regional prakrits right yeah. prakrits are regional colloquial um uh, languages okay. in the same way the marga tradition following natya shastra the marga grammar coexisted with all the deshi hmm. or the regional forms in the post independence india all the deshi forms were rejuvenated marga was not thought of I started my research on Natya Shastra and the Karanas. Honestly, I did not know that I was doing a reconstruction of the Marga. I didn't know. I was doing my work, and only when I completed the work, I knew what I had reconstructed was the Marga, which connects the entire. I would say. uh whole of india and definitely uh, southeast asia oh, how did you feel then <laughs> that moment when you realized that what you had done really exists i was very happy <laughs> was very excited i was marvel mari undru i was very excited because in a, on all my dance tours i had never uh, um slipped uh, visiting museums visiting their archaeological sites mm. visiting artists of each country wow. seeing their rehearsals it's not the performance just seeing something hearing something from the stage is one thing but field work in research means actual interaction with the relevant people this i was fortunate my i used my dance tours concert tours for my research so it enriched my research and my research enriched my dance mutual yes so while there have been many films produced by you and on you the queen of dance was done by the russians and isn't it a befitting title for you 
could you tell us how this project came by and what was it that made them choose you to be the ruler? I don't know. You have to ask them. <laughs> I have no I openness, Akka, to everything. I did nothing. I only danced there. That's all. <laughs> It was such a simple answer to such a... I thought you would have much to tell us about it. <laughs> so, um, now this is about... It's a little sensitive question about the next generation. You have been very much ahead of your times and compiled many DVDs and CDs with the intent that it should be used by students for their learning purpose, to perform, to strengthen the legacy of Bharatanatyam. Do you feel that sufficient justice has been done by the next generation? And I would really like you to express what you feel about how the next generation has embraced Natya. I have always felt that the um, younger generation mm. uh, 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 they are more talented than even my age group. Their grasp is terrific. Yes. Other way, it's a danger. Because <laughs> sometimes they grasp any, everything and anything, good and bad. So what yes. they need is channelizing. Guidance. The channelizing has to be there. And uh, the parents must give... Uh, uh, some kind of a training for humility in them to listen, to learn. Mm. Because these days, children don't have the patience. Very few have the patience. And to train the students to have patience itself is a art of train, uh, teaching. And that's what we try to do in Rithyodhya. And it's so difficult with online classes. Last two years, I tell you, has been such an awful experience, uh, particularly teaching children, because I'm only reminded of one uh, Ayurvedic doctor, who said, I'm not sure how to do Vignesh or Pooja. So, their minds are, you know, wandering. They have too many things things, too many things to distract them. And how are you going to bring them to your control? Right. It's not as though uh, intimidate but you have to draw their attention. And for that only, I think, uh, you know, if the teacher is so good, then they will come under that person. The teacher has to make it interesting. Right. And uh, Pata, it should be appealing. Kata, it should be appealing. I'm sure you understand it must be the same problem for everybody now. So it is only a challenge for the teachers to equip themselves. So if my student doesn't do well, I blame myself. I don't blame the child. I blame myself. So I think of some other way in which it can be nailed on the head. <laughs> True. Uh, what should be the goals of uh, the Indian Cultural Ministry as far as South Indian classical dances are concerned? You think there can be more support, there can be more help, they can chip in in some form to propagate this art form even more into the interior regions, just not uh, the main cities. Uh, well, uh, I think uh, the Sabas had done extremely well from the palace. There was a trans transfer of, uh, what should I say, power. Hmm. To Sabas, yes, to um, support artists and art, and um, 
in the last uh, two years, everything has been very difficult, even for the Sabhas. Um, I think uh, the Sabhas must uh, now um, intrude into Mufasal area hmm. all over Tamil Nadu. I'm talking only about Tamil Nadu. And it is, you can extend it to the entire country. Dance festival is happening only in Chennai. Music festival only in Chennai. Or if you take uh, North India, it's all in Delhi. Or maybe Bhopal. Right. It should go deeper. I mean, in fact, I would say music and dance has to go back to where it belonged. These arts belong to the temples in every village in the temples. And my father used to say, the farmer, the lady, uh, in front of her hut, when she puts the kolam, she would hear the Nadasara music from the temple and she will say, it's a morning raga. This is what <laughs> played in the morning. She knew the difference. She wouldn't know the name of the raga, but right. you'd recognize that it's a, it's something which has to play be played in the morning. How many um, people are now able to um, get exposed to classical arts in interior Tamil Nadu? Right. All that they have is only film music. And it's very powerful. It's yes. a very powerful media. So, uh, Sabhas can rethink, they can start uh, going into districts. In that way, Natyanjali has helped. Hmm. It's my personal experience. For Shivaratri, we started Natyanjali in Nagapatnam, my hometown. I'm, I'm sorry to say, culturally, it was very backward. Hmm. So, at Nila Dakshi Temple, we started the, it's almost 20 years now. We started Natyanjali Festival for Shivaratri. It has now grown. The people are, they know the difference between good and bad dancing. They can definitely differentiate. Exposure illa me eprima interest varo. We have to give them exposure. If you take even television at the Nila, how many channels give prominence for classical arts? They used to be a regular uh, national program. Because I have done a lot of national programs. It never <laughs> catered to the younger generation. In 11 o'clock that night, I am going to Make it earlier in the evening so that the school going children, the college going children, they have they have an opportunity to see some some of the top artists, listen to the best of artists. So we need a composite rethinking about culture policy. Okay. It's not difficult to make it. We need that. In fact, culture has to definitely influence education. It used to be education and culture used to be one department, one ministry. But for what good uh, reason they bifurcated it, I don't know. So culture was removed from education. You ask any of the um, science uh, group, girls and boys, they don't know anything about music hmm. they, 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 because they don't have exposure. Right. right. Once a year, they have a festival in IIT. But IIT is not the only place. What I mean is on a parent level, at every village level. If Bhagavat Melam was uh, done in Melatur and uh, Uttakad villages, the people sitting there who never knew Telugu, they followed because of exposure. 
இன்னைக்கு சுதா ரகுநாதன் பாடுறானா வெல் மியூசிக் அகாடமி அங்க அந்த டிக்கெட்ஸ் ஆர் சோ ஹை ஐ கான் பை த டிக்கெட் அண்ட் திஸ் இஸ் வாட் சில்ட்ரன் சே ஸோ வி ஹாவ் டு மேக் இட் ஆக்சஸபிள் Yes, you and I can do something about it. Because we think on the same lines. I'll talk to you about it. Yes. <laughs> so now we come to a firing range question box. Where it will be short questions and short answers. Which country according to you has the best audience for South Indian classical arts? Well, it depends. The South Indian artists is very vague because... மாஸ்கோவில் வந்து தே லவ் டான்ஸ் இன்ஃபேக்ட் டான்ஸ் வந்து டான்சர்ஸ் ஆர் மோர் அட்மைட் தென் ஃபிலிம் ஸ்டார்ஸ் இன் ரஷ்யா தட் ஐ நோ பட் ஐ ஆம் வெரி சாரி த பேட்டில் ஹஸ் வெரி வெரி சாரி ஐம் ஃபார் பீஸ் பட் that uh, rasa rasana the sense for appreciation is so much in the um village level which surprised me also mm-hmm. i had danced when dr nagaswami discovered the uh, chola palace foundation in um, gange konda chodapuram he phoned me and said padu you know something big is happening because palace is not we have only temples forts are not north india da inge vand temples are so that discovery was uh, something very memorable and she said you want to come and see i said i'll come i'll come and dance there in that second so i went and just that afternoon they had uh, uncovered what is called adad uh, uh, in praise of the king aduk um தமிழ்லையும் இருக்கும் சான்ஸ்கிரிட்லையும் இருக்கும் தமிழில் வந்து தே ஹேட் டிஸ்கவர்ட் ஒன் பீஸ் ஆஃப் போயட்ரி ஆஸ் அ கிவ் மீ தட் ஈவினிங் ஐ கம் அண்ட் டான்ஸ் ஹியர் ஸோ ஐ வெண்ட் டு போனோம் ஐ ஹேட் லன்ச் வித் ராமன் அண்ட் ராமன் யூ நோ இன் தேர் ஹவுஸ் தேர் அவர் ஃபேமிலி ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் வென் டு சேத் ராமன்ஸ் ஹவுஸ் அண்ட் ஷாம்லாமணி வாஸ் வித் மீ மை மை குரூப் வாஸ் தேர் ஐ கேம் பேக் தேர் இஸ் நோ ஸ்டேஜ் it was not even cemented it was all mann thums kitta potu or just one piece of uh, uh, small very very small area anga i danced this uh, um, prasasti and uh, what nagasavi did was like olden days dandora potu around uh, um, கங்கை கொண்ட சோழபுரம் வில்லேஜஸ்ல எல்லாம் பத்மா சுப்பிரமணியம் ஆட போறா அப்படின்னு அனௌன்ஸ் பண்ணிட்டு இட் வாஸ் சோ பியூட்டிஃபுல் சம் டென் தௌசண்ட் பீப்புள் வேர் தேர் தே பிராட் தேர் ஓன் பாய் டு சிட் தேர் சிட்டிங் ஆன் தி ஃப்ளோர் இன் கம்ப்ளீட் மட் அழுக்கு அந்த மாதிரி ஒரு ஏரியா அண்ட் வென் ஐ டான்ஸ் அட்வா கிளி right in front of me because big pan irukanga amma and all it was all curvy also dancing with me and appreciation was something extraordinary and when kapila vachan came next day from delhi to see the site yes she called, i believe she asked the villagers you want she mentioned a big uh, film star name you want me to organize her dance here tomorrow for you to see it seems those villagers said no 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 we are happy to see that person on the screen but dance we want only padma subramanian okay. <laughs> see this is the rasana that is there as the dna it's part of dna anandra children we have to keep that alive who is your best critic kaka at home at home we are all critics at home and uh, after every performance there is a discussion 
what went wrong where and what was good with right from days of my father and the more during shamla mani and balu anna we, we always used to sit and uh, you know it, it's nice to critic i mean criticize on own self i call that introspection yes <laughs> what which is your rela- relaxation spot relaxation spot will uh, after lunch i like yeah. to have a nap besides uh, home you uh, travel panni illa ivlo ivlo travel panni illa moorla i love greenery i love mm-hmm. scenic spots waterfalls uh, i mean i'm very fond of nature i'm a nature's girl i, I that's why i'm a i i call myself a gardener put to me i water my plants i speak to my plants i'm very fond of gardening you nariya productions panirke which one is the closest to your heart it's like asking which limb of your body you like you need all of them it's going to be the answer <laughs> but uh, Uh, if i'm if i if i come out of myself right. forgetting me and i have to judge my productions i would think uh, two of my productions have been the most challenging or i would say three uh, bhagavad gita hm mm-hmm. very challenging jay jay shankar Mm-hmm. very challenging and tirukkural valluvarum oh. vedaniriyum wow wow connecting vedaniri with valluvar these three productions have been a real challenge because something very abstract had to be concretized rama krishna or character nama pannidalam but in the concepts advaitatha kondu varanona illa bhagavad gita la irukiratha kondu varanona ke very difficult and i am somebody who would think uh, if i don't communicate my ideas to the last man in the audience i am a failure abhinaya is to express that expression has to be there right some of these were these three were quite uh, successful of course what makes patuaka laugh out aloud <laughs> அரங்கேற்றுவான் <laughs> <laughs> um one childhood memory that has stayed with you as something very precious unga manasukulli adu vandu dino pasuniya odindirukku uh there are lot of such things enna mundu solanu nenchu marle petten padile well my you know my geeta gandhi film act panirkene na when i was less than 5 adla vandu there is a scene where uh, this child uh, falls from the balcony maadi uh-huh. ledu um kerala they were holding a carpet and all that i didn't know enak enna na i was my father's pet and whatever my father uh, said i would do jump in fire na i would have done it mm. uh, uh, appa vand he asked somebody in the set to go and push me <laughs> if he body refused sure so push a doll why should you push her we can make a doll and push her please don't uh, take a risk then my father himself uh, simply he asked the camera to be switched on he came behind me na appa chuma varan and he pushed 
ही पुष्पी दे हेल्प मी ऑफ कोर्स ऑफ कोर्स फ्रॉम द फर्स्ट फ्लोर यू कैन इमेजिन आई नेवर फॉरगेट व्हेन आई सॉ आई मीन आई सूंड आफ्टर दैट व्हेन आई व्हेन आई सॉ द रशस I started crying. You put it in a bunny tee, na? No, no. But I'm going to be more sorry. I'm thinking I fell. <laughs> I was crying seeing the uh, seeing my falling on the screen. <laughs> What's your famous, uh, uh, shall we say, one line quote? If you meet any any youngster who's interested in you, not you. ஒரு <laughs> it's very important and that will be possible only if you practice sadhana 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 where no me prayojanal without that ungalku uh... pidichu saapad so that have been very endha urukku pona anga anga enna kadikuma na saapduven hmm i am not very fussy about my food but um, strictly vegetarian of course it can be any any type of continental or clan chinese or clan um, palakkad illa tanjore style idu vena irukalam north indian style but i'm i'm happy with any anything that is there i keep away from sweets though oh, okay for health reasons right right I think I'm done with questions Akka. Would you like to say something else to the audience? Well, it's been great talking to you Sudha. I've always loved you. Loved your music, loved your personality, loved your mentality. And uh, it, it's great. Um you get a number that you're talking about is so pleasant, so nice. Now inge kai gatti nokkan irukke unga sushiya mari. எனக்குங்கிங் <laughs> 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 Uh, you would have made a very good dancer you have the personality even now thank you ka <laughs> yeah they know the when personality is important yes. and stage la vandu ukkanda aanu paakanum they must see as i am reminded of oru swami chinmayananda um and the solrache padma you know what i like about you you are an attraction on the stage but not a distraction wow how beautifully worded the couplet like i can't forget that cholin rukeshe ad what a it's a quote it's a quote it's a quote patuka i'm still bereft of words to even acknowledge or say ning evlo vel nadula innikku vandu time koduthirukke no one marandu poite solradhukku Oh, yes, so wow. once uh, I I did a Vinaya when the Vasanthi Akka sang. In the part? Well, the Akka, uh, it was not for a public uh, performance. I'll tell you, Vishwanathan Enfield. Amma. Vishwanathan Akka, before Music Academy, there was a dinner uh, meet. Apo Akka Vandranda. Um... விஸ்வநாதன் சுவாப் கோமதி எல்லாரும் தே வெர் கம்பலிங் மீ ஏதான் ஒரு அபிநயம் பண்ணணும் அப்படின்னு நான் சொன்னேன் எனக்கு பாடுறதுக்கு சாமலாம் நீ வரலையே அப்படின்னு தென் அக்கா சட் வசந்தி அக்கா சட் 
நான் பாடுறேன் நீ ஆடு நான் சொன்னேன் சரி எது என்ன பண்ணலாம் அப்படின்னு யோஜனை பண்ணும் சரி எனக்கு நான் ஆடினது இல்லை அப்போ ஆனா அக்கா பாடின அந்த பாரோ கிருஷ்ணையா எனக்கு ரொம்ப பிடிக்கும் ஐ டோல்ட் ஹர் அக்கா யூ சிங் பாரோ கிருஷ்ணையா நான் அதை அப்படியே பண்றேன் அப்படின்னு ஸோ அதான் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் டைம் ஐ டிட் பாரோ கிருஷ்ணையா பட் வித் எம்எல்விஸ் வாய்ஸ் I wish yes. We could have all benefited by watching it. <laughs> it has been such an absolutely delightful evening, Akka. And uh, you have given so much of educational value to this episode. So, once again, thank you from all of us. And wishing you the best of health and health. the next adutha adutha ninga enna pannano nu manasile nenikirelo ellame nadakano should become a reality you see i have to dance so da kandipa naam adha patti pesirko nu nenikiren the present continuous tense ave irukku enga ma rendra varshama everything has been so ma ninga solluva ninga manas vechi sonnuvo kandipa adu seiyala we we'll do it for Thank you. Thank you to Kannan and Gayatri as well for having made this possible for us. And see you soon, Akka, live somewhere. Keep well and my best wishes to all those who are attending this. I'm sure uh, uh, we are going to be relieved of this pandemic. Let your words come true, Akka. My, my best wishes to all of you and Namaskaram to all of you. Namaskaram. really i sat and watched with folded hands what a contribution to indian dance paduka seems to have done full justice to every opportunity that came her way and put in her own stamp of perfection and creativity into each of them what she has created and is leaving you know behind as archives for us for the world for the younger generation is a treasure trove and i'm sure it will be of great interest to aspiring dancers let's all pray that her dance should continue to inspire inspire all of us and entertain us at the same time educate us and let's hope that she comes up with newer choreographies coming to all of you my dear viewers great joy that you have been with us in each episode and we love your encouragement feedback response suggestions i didn't take any question from the audience in this episode because there was so much for paduaka to share with us and i didn't want to for her to be feel the strain of having to talk i mean she has so much to do already and we are thankful for her precious time so let's meet again with another episode of ee with another guest as soon as we can until then remember the sms sanitizers masks and social distancing do not let your guard down and be negligent we will get back as soon as possible tara until then